Hello everybody, welcome to Samba. So we're in Kota Kinabalu. Finally made it to Borneo. Actually, it's not my first time in Borneo. I have been to Brunei before when I was doing a transit to Bali, uh, one trip, one journey. But yeah, we're in the waterfront area. So my hotel is just across the road there. Lots of coaches, lots of visitors. There's this is a great place actually because this this is like the waterfront area here so load a load of bars um, if you like your seafood you can go to like a seafood restaurant on the front here or further down which I will go to probably later I'll show you there's a Filipino market so I have had some food from there um, a couple days ago it was good um, I'm not much of a seafood eater but the food was actually really nice I don't know how it compares price wise because like I said, I don't really eat seafood, so I don't know the going rate, you know, but it weren't too bad. I think it cost about £10, but I had some like huge prawns and yeah, it was a massive meal. So yeah, this is the waterfront area here. Like I said, loads of bars. In the evening, it's packed here. It's, it's very busy. If you like to drink alcohol, have a beer, it's a great location to do that. So yeah, this is the waterfront area here. I'll just, I'll just show you it in the daytime and then I'll come back in the evening and show you then. So this is the waterfront, look how beautiful it is. And it's very quiet here in the daytime. It's about 2 p.m. at the moment. But yeah, in the evening, it is packed. So right at the end of the pier here, there's the Filipino um, restaurant. The airport's not far from here, so you could probably see there's an airplane flying pretty low. So yeah, what I think, if you can hear me, you can go loud in Air Asia there. So yeah, um, today I want to go to the museum, just because I want to know more about the local kind of history of the place. Like I said, there's a lot of Filipinos here. When I was speaking to some guys uh, the other day, visually they look Filipino, but when I asked them, are you Filipino? They're straight up said, no, we're Southern. So yeah, I want to know like the history there, because maybe from what i've heard a lot of filipinos have lived here for a long long time and then of course you get filipinos coming here um economic migrants you know coming here to try and make money it does have a philippine i haven't been to the philippines but it does have a philippines feel to the place um unfortunately there's a lot of kids kind of begging um but yeah that's well, what can you do isn't it? um so yeah let's let's have a look around Kota Kinabalu. Alright, Sabah Museum, Sabah State Museum. So I was just I was just talking to a taxi driver, just kind of planning my next route. So I don't know whether to go to Sandakan next or whether to go uh, the other way to like Labuan Island uh, and then maybe to Brunei after. I'm not sure, but I'll tell you one thing, it's baking hot. I mean, I remember it from last time I was in Borneo in Brunei. I only spent like five hours going around Brunei but it was so so hot I'm pretty hungry you know I don't know whether to get a little something now or go to the museum first maybe I could get some fruit or something what have we got hello oh, what have we got here um apaini it's like sweet potato, is it? Yeah. Can, can I have it? Maybe some pineapple as well. So I haven't actually eaten anything today, so I thought maybe before I go wandering around, I should have a little something to eat. So those nice ladies there, nice young girls were preparing some fried things. So what we've got is I don't know how to say this in Bahasa Malay, but it is fried sweet potato. So, this tastes nice. The the batter, once again, is, is nice, it's very crispy. It's been there a while, it's not hot, but it's a good snack to have. Like I said, I haven't eaten anything today, and it's about 2 p.m. So I got that. She was like carrying, she was putting like lots more in, and I was like, 
Hast du noch oder mal Thema? Und also, wir haben noch some some Pineapple. And all together that came to four ringgit. So, what's that? About 75, 80 pence. Hello, uh, Satu ticket. What time is it close? Li Lima Jam. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So yeah, ticket for Fauna, 15 ringgit. Lima Balas. So these guys are the original gangsters. So they used to have um, tribal feuds and then they would go head hunting. So this, this gentleman here is a head hunter and he would go around collecting heads from rival tribal gangs. So then they'd get all these skulls and put them up in their house for good luck. Imagine that. So yeah, there's a um, the shield. And then we got uh, the weapon of choice. Real bad man. Yeah, crazy, isn't it? That's that's some real stuff. So apparently, he used to um, he used to start off with just one person fighting another person, and maybe even for a bride. So the so they're fighting over um, a, a woman to take the head as like a prize, and then what will happen is. Other family members get involved in the feud as well, and it becomes like a tribal war then. But yeah, just hanging scores like this, crazy. And it wasn't, it, apparently, um, it was only when British North Borneo Chartered Company and came along. So I don't know when that was, maybe early, early 1900s, I'm not sure, but yeah, I mean, this picture, this guy here, he's a headhunter and this picture was taken in 1953. So yeah, not too long ago, not too long ago. Crazy. So here's a bit of the history I'm gonna try and summarize. I've, I've had a read through and I'm kind of, I kind of know what's happening. So yeah, Sulu C there in the, in the top right. So Sulu used to be what is present day um, Philippines, so like Palawan Islands and that kind of area. So. The Sultan of Sulu and the Sultan of Brunei um, had an arrangement where um, the Sultan of Sulu helped the Sultan of Brunei, who owned Sabah at the time. So he gave the Sultan of Sulu Sabah, and then later on, when the uh, Sultan of Sulu was in trouble, the British helped, and then he gave the British Sabah. So then it became British North Borneo there. So we've got British North Borneo, we've got Brunei, Sarawak, and then this area here, which is now Indonesia, was Dutch Borneo, because at the time, um, the, the Dutch, um, Indonesia was a Dutch colony, Dutch East Indies. So the Dutch owned the bottom half of Borneo, British, the top right corner, and then, I'm not too sure about Sarawak, actually. I need to, maybe we'll go to museum in Sarawak when I'm there. But um, yeah, I'm not too sure why that was left alone. But yeah, these bloody British again coming and messing things up for people. So this guy here, this Sir James Brook, he was actually the first Raja of Sarawak. And uh, it says that he helped, um, he was inst instrumental in obtaining the island of Labuan on the west coast of Sabah from the Sultan of Brunei. So obviously we've, we've still, still to this day, the British have got a very good relationship with the Sultan of Brunei. Um, when the Queen was still alive, they, I mean, like I said, I've been to Brunei before and he's got like a huge chariot in one of the museums. If I go to Brunei again, maybe I can show you. Um, but the only, per, only other person other than the Sultan of Brunei to, to sit in that um, chariot was the Queen. So we as in the british have been like propping him up for quite a while um from the looks of it now though the people are happy with him anyway it's not like they're, they're not happy with him so um yeah that's just a bit of the history from my knowledge um i was reading as well the philippine influence so obviously the sulu um uh, sultan of sulu so that kind of empire 
which is now Philippines, a lot of travellers came like hundreds of years ago, maybe even thousands of years ago, on ships to Sabah. So there's been like a um, settlement of Filipinos. Well, what what would you call Filipinos now in Sabah for a long, long time? So, so yeah. So like I said, Sabah uh, used to be kind of part of the Philippines in the old way. I don't know. Um, that's that's what I interpreted interpreted from the readings anyway. So yeah, this museum's good though. It gives you a lot of history. I mean, there's a lot, a lot to look at. If you want to really know the history and go into detail, there's a lot to read. So I'm, I'm not going to go too too far into it. I just wanted to know basic kind of history of Sabah and Borneo in general. So yeah, look, here's the Malaysian flag and there's the Sabah flag. So as part of the museum, they were like a traditional village and it says here, there's a suspension bridge and it says only five persons allowed at a time. So I'm hoping my size is not the size of five Malaysians because <laughs> I am a lot bigger than most Malaysians. So yeah, it's got to be interesting. It's not a, it's not a far fall anyway, if I do, if I do, <laughs> if I do drop, I'll probably still survive. But yeah, wow. Yeah, it's beautiful. So yeah, we learnt about some of the history in the museum bit. Now we can actually see what kind of people used to live in. The old history was mad though, with the headhunters and everything. It's crazy that is, and it wasn't even that long ago as well. Um, but yeah, this look is like it's like tied up. Not letting just bodged it together. But um, yeah, let's have a look at the traditional way of life, eh? Oh, this is the old school housing. So what is it? it? Looks quite nice. And on the way here, we went past like a um, the grab driver was saying it's like a Filipino settlement. So they got like houses like this, but on sticks. But like these, these actually look better. To be honest, the other ones, the uh, like proper bodged together, the Filipino ones, like any piece of scrap metal or wood to just bang it on. But these. No, it's very nice and intricate, isn't it? Using all the bamboo. I don't know what leaves they're using. I suppose if there happened to be a fire, <laughs> then it's not too good. But look how beautiful this is. Got like a lily pond. You know, I'm guessing that's a bird. Sounds worse than my uh, alarm clock. Uh, settings. So the only thing that lets this down, obviously it's like a traditional village. The only thing that lets it down, we've got this like, I'm guessing it's 5G tower here. So it kind of takes takes a bit of the charm away from it. But I think you can actually go into this house here. So we'll have a look inside, see what it's like inside. I don't know what this area is for. Maybe they perform like, I don't know, traditional dance or something at some point. But, and it is so hot here. I'm glad I kind of worked my way, worked my way up to this heat. I go in there to West Peninsula first. Um, what's this Chinese farmhouse? Should we have a look inside here? Oh, very basic. It's actually not too far off. When I was in Brunei, they've got like a, a settlement on the water there, like houses on stilts. And it's not it's not too dissimilar from what they're living in today. I mean, um, I might, when I go to Brunei again, I might try and go, th go there once more, because I didn't like film it or anything. Um, but it's, it's nice seeing you, like uh, one of the ladies invited us in, we had like a cup of tea and everything with her. So people are very friendly there. I have to say, this this is probably more beautiful though than in Brunei because Brunei was the uh, area is a bit more built up. Obviously, this is trying to keep it more traditional, you know, idyllic. We've got some modern day houses next to the door. So, yeah, let's have a look inside of here. I don't know how well you're able to see because it's pretty dark. Look 
creaky floorboards. So yeah, this is pretty dark, but I guess when it's so hot, and obviously these, these are times before aircon and fans, the darkness, the dark kind of wood, maybe will keep you cool. I don't know. Does that make sense? You know, one thing I noticed as soon as I got off the plane, um, it felt like the grass, the grass in Sabah is more like England. I think like in England, we've got like the best, or in the UK, we've got like the best grass. It sounds weird to say this, but um, yeah, wherever I've been in the world, the grass just isn't the same. But um, the smell and the feel of the grass here is, is a lot more similar to in the UK. So that's the outside of the building we're just in. That is a room at Brunei, it's our Brunei house. And this one here is, uh, don't I pronounce it? It's the room of Bajau, Bajau house. So it's good that they're showing loads of different ones. So the first one we went into this China, that was Brunei. And this one might be a bit difficult for me to get up with the camera in my hand. kind of dark in here but it is it does feel a lot a lot cooler the floorboards as well um, very bouncy hope I'm actually allowed to go in here <laughs> I just walked up it didn't, didn't see any signs it's, yeah, it's, it's really nice to just walk around here it's so relaxing walk out onto the jetty here there's no one around as well like, I'm literally like the only person here, which is amazing. Apart from the dogs in the background. Oh, another one's joined in. So, just having a nice walk now from the museum. I would say it's definitely worth checking out. 15 ringgit for a phone. I can't remember how much it is for a Malay. But it's well worth it, man. Less than three pounds. You could spend hours there, really, if you wanted to. Even... To honest, I only paid really to go into the exhibit bit. I suppose you could actually go to the village without even paying, but why not give them some money anyway? You know what I mean? This uh, helps helps restore all the exhibits and everything in there. So yeah, uh, definitely worth having a look. I'm just having a nice stroll now from the museum. There's a uh, the Sabah's what do you call it? Sabah's State Mosque, State Masjid is just around the corner so I thought might as well go have a little walk towards that and then we'll probably get a grab back to the, where my area we'll have a look at the waterfront, what it's like in the evening or sunset time maybe and then we'll get some food at the uh, Philippine Market I speak, when my grab driver earlier he was suggesting that there's also street food around there's like a, a statue of like a marlin so he's saying that you can get street food down there as well. So maybe on the next video I'll go to that one. Because I've still got a few more days left in, Sab in um, Kota Kinabalu. And then I'm not sure where we're going. We're either going to go to Sandakan or we're going to go the other way. Um, I'd like to go to Sandakan because it's close to like the orangutan reserves and stuff like that. I mean, they're, they're, it's kind of like, I suppose it's kind of like enclosed. You're not going to see them in the wild. But I suppose it, <laughs> at least it increases your chance of seeing one, you know. So, while in Borneo, you need to check out the orangutans, don't you? So. so, I guess this is the State Mosque of Sabah. The prayer call was not too long ago, so I don't know if I'm about to, allowed to go inside. There's car parks, really busy. And then there's actually like a little kind of I don't know what you call this, like a kind of mini market with like some food vendors and you can buy some like, uh, what do you call it, you know, the gowns and everything like that. So it's a nice setting. Like I say, I'm not sure I'll be able to go inside. So here's the washroom. My friend, excuse me, can I, can I go inside or? Can I go inside? To... No, no, not. I just want to look in the. Can I look in the mosque or no? Masjid. Right, 
right, yeah, unfortunately I can't go inside because I've got shorts on again. So um, a lot of the kind of tourist um, friendly masjids will provide you with like a robe, you know, like in KL or in Putrajaya. But unfortunately, I don't, well, I don't think they get many tourists coming here, to be honest with you. So yeah, I'm not allowed to go inside, but there's another view of the dome and the spire. Yeah, it's busy anyway, so um, I don't really want to disrupt people praying anyway. But yeah, it would have been nice to go inside, but oh well, I was around the corner anyway. So yeah, maybe we'll go back to the waterfront area then. And because um, what time is it now? It's, it's coming close to sunset, so. Alright, guys, so we're back and it's around sunset time, so. As you can see, it's a lot busier than earlier. I don't know how well you can see because it's. Sun has just gone down. But yeah, it's a beautiful place to catch a sunset. Looks like there's a party bus over there as well. See the, see the bus, see the boat all lit up. So yeah, at the end of this pier is the Philippine market. So that's where we're gonna go get food. Hello, I'm okay, thank you. So yeah, people will try and collar you. They will try and get you into their bar, which is fair enough, I suppose. You know, they're all trying to make money. I mean, like I say, there's a load of bars on this stretch. Just chatting to a guy uh, a bit early on, and he was saying that the Philippine market, which you're going to now, is like overpriced. He was saying you should go to more like a local one, like a Malay one. But I want to show you anyway because it's like crazy atmosphere. Like I said, I've never been to Philippines, but it feels like in Philippines. So this is the Philippine market. It's very, very, very busy. Always. He's always, the guy I was chatting to earlier, he was saying to me, he was saying, make sure your bag's closed, don't show any valuables, because you'll get robbed. I'm like, Hello. I was here the other day and it went to you, bud. Some Dorian going on. I will try some Dorian in Sabah at some point, because I heard that it, it is the best place to get Dorian. Could be wrong, but so yeah, people buying their fresh goods here, the fresh chicken. What are these? Oh, these chilies are proper spicy, these little ones. Hey, hey. Maybe later. Nanti, nanti, nanti. So yeah, these <laughs> these kids will try and sell this stuff. Very pungent smell around there. Look at that man, look at that. If you've never been somewhere like this, it's uh, definitely an experience. I know this is a lot busier than I was here the other day. You know what, I ain't gonna attempt to go down here. Crazy busy. What day is it today? Wednesday today. Hello. Yeah. People all over the place. I think I got a dragon fruit from this guy yesterday and a mango. Yeah, I'm gonna go see my see the lads that I got some fish off the other day. I got well, I got a shrimp, which is um, not big seafood retail, but it was really nice because it's proper fresh here. I don't even know what this is. What's, what's this? Tofu? Tahu? Tofu? Oh, tapioca. Oh, okay, okay. Selling white blocks. So it's in Colombia for a minute. Yeah, all the fresh fruits. These guys as well, if you want any fruit, they will they will cut it up for you as well, which is good. And the potato. Feels like it's changed around from last time I was there. I was here a couple days ago and it's like it seems like everything's moved a little bit. Oh, funny they get around that way. Definitely a crazy place. So this is where I got some seafood from the other day. Hello, Hello. How are you doing? 
Bought some food for me the other day. Um, yeah, yeah. Barbecue. What do you recommend? That's good. Barbecue. A big fish. Yeah, my fish. Just me though. Just me. I don't want to eat like a. Yeah. So I got some of these ones the other day. Hello, sir. Dinner. Hello. What person? Yeah, just me. Just me. So, um, How do you want something small like a chill. I don't want too much. Uh, I had I had the prawns the other day. Oh yeah. It's... Maybe like a small fish or something. Small fish. Yeah. Uh, you can now have one. you are. Yeah, brother. Thank you so much. Grouper? Okay. Parapa Wingish? 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 Three flavors with uh -huh. sweet and sour, uh, green, yeah. bakar sambal, Malaysian style. Pedas? A uh, little bit. Yeah, yeah, I want. Uh, you like spicy? Saya suka, saya suka pedas. Okay, bakar sambal <laughs> lah, bakar sambal. Okay. And um, you know, like the other day, I bought some uh, sayur, sayur, vegetables, vegetables, but it's too big. Can you do like a kecil, like a half portion? Okay. Small size, uh -huh. 12, medium size, 18. Tapi, uh, one person, uh, the small yeah, size. Yeah. Um, apa seo? Ap uh, Kangkung, Seo Champol, Pakis, Skyland. Um, Kangkung Belacan. Uh, uh, morning Glory? Uh, morning Glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kangkung Belacan. Mm -hmm. Mo Belacan. Yeah. Okay. And uh, nas Nasi Puti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terima kasih. So, I bought some fried goods from these guys over there as well. Hello. So yeah, my, my regular seat, this is where I sat the other day as well. So these are all the guys cooking in about. Oh, what? I'm gonna go. Hello, brother, you okay? Yeah. Man, you must be hot, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Badass. <laughs> oh, it looks good. Is that lobster there? Hello, brother. So yeah, cooking up a storm. So here's the spread. We've got a grouper, and we've got some. Um, what do you call it? Morning glory. So I ask the grouper to be spicy. I don't normally eat fish, so if it's spicy, it's okay. You know, it's not. It's not like a fishy taste. But also, it's really. It should be really fresh anyway, so I don't think it should taste too fishy. But my friend there was saying that to clean the fish nicely, so here we go. Hello! Hello! It is really good. It's spicy, but not, not too spicy. Tonis is perfect spice for me. Let's try some of the morning glory. I do buy this at home, but quite, that's quite a lot in the UK because it's always imported, normally from Thailand. Mm. Nice and garlicky, such a spice, got a few chilies in there. This is where I'm eating anyway, this is the setting, so it's a bit crazy. It's got a nice atmosphere though, you know, it's a bit of a buzz. Like I was saying, a few people I spoke to saying that you can get uh, fish cheaper in other places. And I'll be honest with you, it's not the cleanest of places. But I ate here the other day and I had no problem, so I've got no problem coming back. The guys here are nice. All the prices are like set prices written down. I suppose you could negotiate, but um, I've just, I just pay what they ask me to, you know. You just um, see what the price is before you actually order that. 
So I think the group was 27. I think the small um, morning glory was 12. Nasty Pooty, and then I've got myself a coconut as well, which is seven ringgit. So, not a cheap meal, but very tasty, and the guys in the kitchen are actually very good as well. Yeah, we small one. small So yeah, I'm gonna eat this. Don't know how much more I can eat after this, but I'll show you around the rest of the market. This guy is selling like chicken wings over there, which. I had some, not from here, but similar kind of chicken wing uh, yesterday and they were very tasty. So yeah, I'm gonna eat this and then I'll show you around the rest of the market. Right, so we're looking around the market again. I just had to make a mad dash to the toilet. That's one thing, if you come here, there's no toilets anywhere to be seen. Um, it's actually, around um, outside the, this, this uh, market, there's actually a few other markets as well, selling clothing. This is all food, really. So this is this is my kind of market. Let's see where else the guy is. This this is like the biryani. So that's probably like more kind of Malay food. <clears throat> Man, it's so hot in here. So we've got all the noodles. Hello, rice, nasi. I'm on the hunt for something a bit sweet now. Hello, um, Nanti. Oh, this one I bought some. Hello, man. How you doing? I think I bought some from you the other day. Um, was it the the tahu? The was that you? The like tofu. Uh, tofu, ma. Yeah, was that you? Yeah, I think it was. Uh, tahu. Then, no. Oh, okay. This way, this day. Um, what, what's, what's nice then? What do you recommend? This one, uh, banana cake. Banana cake? Yeah. It's a bit big though for me, you know. Ah. I need ah. maybe something smaller. Is this chocolate? Chocolate, chocolate cake? Yeah, cake. Okay, I'll have. Well, let's have to. You want? Uh huh. You want plastic? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, brapa? Nam. And nam. Six ringgit. Six ringgit. One spoon? Um, yeah, go on then. Three makasi. Okay. So yeah, I bought some like, uh, I don't know what they call it. It's like tofu, but it's like, you add kind of like a syrup to it, so it's a bit sweet. And all the pig stuff around there. These guys are selling burgers. Family burger. So, um, I am Goreng. Right, proper steamed up around here. What do you think? So yeah, everyone trying to get you to eat at their place. Well, I've already eaten now, so I don't want much. Oh, this is what I wanted to show you, man. There's rolls and rolls of chicken wings. I think I've had too much to eat now, but these wings are fire. Very nice. It's the same price I paid yesterday as well. 250 per ring. And you got the ikan bakar and the satay. So yeah, look how smoky. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's so smoky here. But the smell is incredible. So, I don't know what these things are, yeah. The salt on man, I am sweating. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much the end of the food bit. I haven't actually ventured this far yet, um, but there's those like containers here. So containers selling like clothing. Hello. Yeah, loads of different things. Oh. So if you heard the call to prayer, this must be the masjid here. Yeah, it stretches for, for far, for far. Yeah, I've not been this way before. All I've been is just for food, so. Look all the snacks and stuff they got here, like all nuts and... Uh, what do they call it? Is it ikan bilis? The 
dried fishies, forms. Hello. Sir. Hello. Kappa kappa. Good. Yeah, YouTuber. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hello. Hey man, safe. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Sabah. Big playground here. Oh, so there's more food here, I didn't even know. The little pussy cats there, oh, they're fighting. These little cats. They knew each other. Oh, you can definitely smell the Dorian. Damn. So yeah, it's pretty much the same, same. Um, everyone's pretty much saying the same kind of thing. This person selling here. Yeah. Like creams and stuff. So yeah. All oh, very much the same. So yeah, guys, uh, I think I'll leave the video here today. Um, had, a, had a nice day, checked out some history of Sabah and got some food and had a look around the market. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll try and make another video while I'm here in Sabah, I'm sure I can. Um, like I was saying earlier, the grab driver had, he said that there's another market, more like a Malay market, um, by the Marlin statue. So we'll check that out, check that out in the next vlog. So hope to see you there. Please subscribe. Until then, wonder well, my friends.